my brother and sister and I, we're all older now, we still fight. The thing we more often than not fight about, though, is who's bringing what to the family functions. <laughs> but as happened just the other weekend with Thanksgiving, two weeks before, I get an email from my dad talking about here's the time, here's we're covering some birthdays while we're there, here's everything that's happening, and here's what everybody's bringing. Number two, Ian. Bring those mashed potatoes. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm bringing the mashed potatoes. But we've changed the game now. We're talking russet potatoes, skin still on, cut up nicely, cooked in milk, mind you, roasted garlic, white cheddar, chives, fresh ground black pepper, kosher salt. Mm -hmm -hmm. Good stuff. I say every time, you bring in mashed potatoes? My, my cousins, or not my cousins, sorry, my, my niece and my nephew, they text me all the time because I'm the fun uncle. Um, and they'll, they'll text me and say, are you, are you bringing mashed potatoes? Yeah. They're like, okay, I'll be there. Like they had a choice. But anyway, <laughs> I love it. The mashed potatoes have become such a part of my life. And it's, it's why I love to cook. And when I think about that time, when I think about us serving that food, and I have so many joyful memories of that time, I think often about my dad and how he must have felt. Do you remember being little, and it was, you know, Christmas, birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, you didn't have any money to buy a present for your parent. So what did you do? You make them something, often in class. And then you'd come home and go, I made this for you. All of your love, all of yourself, put into that thing. And as someone, I now have grown kids, but I think back with nothing but joy of the days when those two would come home and go, Dad, I made this for you. Ooh, right in the fields when they would do that. I mean, it was probably a piece of crap, let's be real. <laughs> but there are several of those pieces of crap that I still have in my office. Because all of yourself went into that. And what that makes me think about and realize, and maybe as a question that I would put out to all of you, is why don't we, as individuals, every single day, do the things that will allow you to look yourself in the mirror and go, I made this for you. Because we don't. We don't value ourselves in that way. We don't feel grateful for ourselves. But we should, and it's why I cook. I love to cook. I, I love having people over. There are several people in the room that have been around my table before, and there's nothing greater than that. It is because of that experience as a child that became a sacred space sitting around my table. No phones better be out, or you're getting the hell out of my apartment, all right? <laughs> but that is a sacred space, and I love having people over, but the thing is I live alone. So more often than not, I'm just cooking for me. And I post that on Instagram. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I love, I take a picture of every meal I cook just so I have the picture, and maybe one in 20 I will post. But sometimes when I do, and I'll post that on Instagram the night I'm cooking, and I'll garnish it up and plate it. It looks fantastic. And I'll have a friend text me after they see the post and say, hey, uh, what's up? You got a hot date? You got somebody over? What's going on? So, no, it's just me. Dude, why did you play it like that? Because <laughs> I'm worth it. And so are you. We need to remember that because we don't, we're not conscious necessarily about the things we do for ourselves because we're so focused on the things that we're sometimes doing for others. Or maybe we're just focused on what we're doing for ourselves, but it's what we're putting in, what we're putting out. I think about... Not long after my divorce, my kids were in high school, and you'd have them over every other weekend. I'd take them off, we'd go grocery shopping. I remember the one time going grocery shopping with my kids, go, so what do you guys want to have for dinner tonight? And my kids love shepherd's pie. Oh, mostly because it's got mashed potatoes, but <laughs> they love shepherd's pie. And I remember my youngest, Sammy, saying, uh, can we have shepherd's pie? Sure, all right, let's get some potatoes, we need the milk, we need the cheese, we got the chives, we're going to get ground beef, got a little stock so I can make a gravy, I'm better, I'm refreshed time, I'm listing off all these things. And Sam goes, Dad, why don't we just get this one? Points to the one in the freezer section. The look of shock on my face. You're a Tyson, damn it. But I did, I was flabbergasted. And she said, some words that shocked me to my core. 
and I still think about it all the time. She said, Dad, it's good enough. No, it's not. That's not good enough for me to put on my table for my kids. It's not good enough for you, not because it's pre-processed, pre-made food, but it's why are we letting somebody else make it for us? Why don't we make it ourselves? And it's not even about the food. You can go to the gym and work out and take fantastic care of yourself, and then you go home and you sit yourself in front of your TV, or you go onto Facebook, you go onto social media, and you believe everything that you see that somebody else is making. It's not yours. You haven't done the work. You haven't gone to see, is this, is this what I want to be taking into my body? But we still do. And when you start to think about that sense of self-care, and it was mentioned earlier, about how can I take care of myself? How can I do the best for me? Which again, cooking for me is an act of self-care. When you start to think about that, you start to drive that great fuel, fuel, you start to feed your life in that way, you look at things a lot differently. I remember, this is five or six years ago now, I was asked by a friend of mine. She lives out in BC, and she did work with a charity that was operating out of Rio in Brazil, working with kids that were living in the favelas, the, the, the slums there. They wanted to get these kids out of the slums, and they had a couple of schools, and they had all these different programs and bringing food baskets, baskets to families. She said, I'd love for you to come down and check it out. So I went down for a week. Every day, we would go to the elementary school, we would go to the high school, you'd get to sit in on classes and work with these kids. It was magical. I sat at a table with a second grade girl who didn't speak a word of English, and I didn't speak a word of Portuguese. We drew pictures and asked each other what the words were. Awesome. But the first day we were there, it was getting around lunchtime, some of the other people in the group are off playing soccer, because Brazil. Um, they're playing soccer with the kids, some are swimming in the pool, playing and think, doing art, whatever, playing music. And then they told us, oh, we're getting ready for lunch. And I see people back in the kitchen getting ready to serve the lunch, which may very well be some of these kids' only meal of the day. And I went, I'm, I'm going in there. I'm going to the kitchen right now. And I was in there with these four Portuguese women who did not speak a word of English. I was trying to get, we worked out like what I could do to help to serve. There was a little service window, and the kids would come up, and you'd hand them the plate, and oh, it warmed the heart. But then something really amazing happened. I was just up there, everybody had, was at their table, everybody was eating, I was kind of eating mine behind the counter, this delicious Brazilian food. And a little kid came up and went, mash. And there was a second grade teacher that I'd been sitting with who spoke a little bit of English. And she'd been helping me with my Portuguese. He handed me this plate and said, mais. And I looked at her and she said, more. It broke me. Broke me standing there. And I was like, yeah, more, of course, come on. And I'm, like, I'm piling this plate up. And she went, no, 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 paquito, paquito, paquito. Like, don't, they don't want to waste food. Don't give them everything. But as every kid would come up and say, Mash, oh, all I wanted was more. Mash became my, my mantra that week. I wanted all of it, being able to help people. And doing it through food was magical. And then being able to come home. And now I love, and it's not something I post on Instagram, because why the hell would you do it? But I love sometimes when I'm on the road, if I've got a free day, like I did this a couple of times in Calgary last year, I had a friend who lived there, and we went down to a shelter and fed the hungry in the afternoon. I don't need to flex on the ground for that. It was my sh It was more. Something magical that I got to do. And doing that again, it fueled that engine. You give that gratitude. You get it back. It fuels you. We all need to find the things every single day that can give us that great fuel that can drive that engine forward for your own healing, for your own self-care, how we can take care of ourselves, how we can take care of others. It's an incredible thing that I want you to do. I want you all to be able to look in the mirror at yourselves and see that you made this for you. I don't care what it is. I'm not saying you have to cook, but find the thing that, that makes you stand tall and say, I did this for me. Make that table your sacred space at home. It will feed your life. It will feed your soul. And one last thing to say to you before I go. I made this for you. Thank you all so much.